I'm Aaron from Foamdog.com and part two of a dogfight battle between the Droid DNA and the One X Plus HTC Brethren of sorts starts in just a second, but first, special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like this for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll deal with unbiased advice, whether you're shopping for T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T, or Verizon. Now make sure you get what's most important to you and what you need the most at Best Buy Mobile. Droid DNA, One X Plus, dogfight battle, and it starts right now. It's part two of a dogfight battle between two awesome HTC devices, one on Verizon, one on AT&T. This is the HTC Droid DNA, and it's an awesome Verizon HTC flagship just in time for the holiday season. It's packing, amongst other things, a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 Pro CPU. It's got a 5-inch 1080p HD display. You heard that right. It's not a 720p HD display. It's a 1080p HD display. 8-megapixel camera, 2,020 milliamp hour non-removable battery, 4G LTE. It's got everything you need to rock it and roll it in 2013. Then you've got the HTC One X over here. An evolution to the HTC One X, excuse me, that's it. One X Plus, evolution to the HTC One X that came out a couple of months ago on AT&T. It's packing some nice new features, a quad-core 1.7 gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 3 CPU, a 4.7 inch HD display, although this one's only 720p, an 8 megapixel camera, 2,100 milliamp hour battery, and the real kicker, 64 gigabytes of internal storage. You get a ton of storage here. You get a ton of uh, awesomeness over here. Storage isn't so great over here. 16 gigabytes of internal storage. No room for expansion on either of these devices, but if you're looking for a hot Android 4.1 device and for whatever reason you don't like the Samsung devices or the LG devices out there, these could be the choices for you. Let's jump right into part two because this is going to be a tough dogfight battle. I mean, these are awesome in their own respects. It may depend on a lot of situations on which carrier you're on, but if you're open to switching or you're open to looking at different devices, take a look, strap in, and get ready for an awesome dogfight, my friends. Let's start out by going to speed test and taking a look at 4G LTE on both of these networks. You got 4G LTE on Verizon, 4G LTE on AT&T. Both of these are running in the Dallas metro area. Let me see if I can get this one switched over. At least kind of make it kind of similar to the Dallas one. For whatever reason, it's not locking onto my GPS location. We'll run with this one just to take a look and perhaps it'll lock afterwards. But Verizon promises a download speed of five to 12 megabits per second on their LTE, an upload speed of two to five megabits per second. And as you can see, it's coming right in right on top of that actually, on the download speed. You've got 11.5 megabits per second over here, which is arguably an AT&T hotspot. It is Dallas after all, AT&T is based in Dallas. You can see 25.76 megabits per second on the LTE upload of 9.71. Download over here about 11.64, so right there in that Verizon kind of conservative five to 12 megabits per second speed they talk about on their website and online through different social media mediums. Upload speed, 1.71 megabits per second. Let's see if we can get that sucker locked onto a Dallas server. It doesn't look like we can, but you get a rough idea of what it looks like. And you can see I've seen 13 megabits per second, 12 megabits per second. So right there around that 5 to 12 megabits per second speed. Let me see if I've taken a look at this one since I've reset it. Yeah, 19 megabits per second, 19 on the download between 5 and 12. So I'd say about 5 and 12 all around on the upload speed. So very impressive all around on both of these devices. Now let's take a second here before we go into Quadrant Standard and talk a little bit about build quality on both of these devices. On the left side, you've got some different design themes here depending on which device you go with. This is very Verizon over here, as you can see by the red color themes, the accents, very much a Verizon device, kind of an offshoot of the Droid Incredible, which came out all those many months ago on Verizon. You can see up in the earpiece grill, you got red. Camera, you got red. Power button, you got red and you get the red accents around both sides of the unit. So left side, nothing on that side. Right side, you get the volume rocker, although it's kind of partially hidden on the red over here. Micro USB charging port at the bottom with a really annoying flap that you have to open every single time you want to charge. If I were you, this is just something totally I would do. I'd rip off the charger, but hey, that's defacing your device. You make that decision, we're not responsible, but I'd probably rip that off because I think it'd get old after a while undoing that, redoing and undoing it and more. So 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top, power button, a little bit recessed. I'm concerned about that over the course of two years. As you can see right here, very recessed power button, kind of hard to press and this device isn't even a month old. So keep that in mind. Up here, micro SIM card slot, which you need a little tool to remove. And then of course your camera on the back, it's flush. One thing I really like about this that is not pointed out in a few reviews or many reviews, I should say, it's got a notification light on the back as well as the front. Now this is great for people that turn over their devices inadvertently. You've got a notification bar or notification light back here. 
and up here so you can easily see what you miss. This is terrible for people like me that turn the device over to avoid the notification light because it's still gonna blink regardless of whether you turn it over or not. And there's no option to turn one off but keep one on. It's either all off or all on. One X over here, micro USB charging port on the left side. No flap to worry about over here. Volume rocker on the right side. You get your buttons down here at the bottom as you do you over on this one. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack power button. Not as recessed over here, not too concerned on the One X Plus. So design-wise, a little bit different. This one's a little bit smaller, obviously, with a 4.7 inch display. This one is bigger, but still pocketable and easy to hold in the hand. Let's take a look at Quadrant Standard on both of these devices. And as I always say in Quadrant Standard, take it with a grain of salt. It's not indicative of day-to-day -day performance. That said, I think this does give a nice indicator overall of what you can expect from both of these devices. And Quadrant Standard stopped. That is not what you can expect from this device. Let's go ahead and run that again and take a look here. So I'll talk about call quality a little bit while these are running. Call quality's been really good on both of these. I'm kind of deaf when it comes to talking on the phone. I have a hard time hearing things. I keep saying what a million times, my friends, my significant other, it drives them nuts. But both of these devices are fantastic when it comes to that. The earpiece is nice and loud on both regards. For me, the One X Plus is great. The Droid DNA is great. I don't really notice a discernible difference between either one of them. Speaker phone's equally good. Where I did notice something, I find that overall call quality is just a smidgen better for me personally on the One X Plus. I found that when taking these to their respective dead zones, I noticed a little bit better call quality over on the AT&T side. I noticed that the earpiece remained loud, whereas over here I had a little bit of trouble hearing. Neither one dropped the call by any means, but I was very impressed with the overall quality over here. That said, 7,391 on Quadrant Standard. Over here, 7,858. And this is something I'm kind of noticing all around. I don't want to generalize by any means, but I have found overall that the Snapdragon S4 Pro quad-core CPU performs a little bit better than the NVIDIA Tegra 3 in Quadrant Standard and some of these other day-to-day -day tests. That said, they both do really well in games, as you can see. And we'll load up Reign of Amira on this one so you can take a look. And we'll load up Emmy Infiltrator. Bear with me, I'm terrible at playing games. If you watched the Droid DNA unboxing, you know this on the Verizon Wireless YouTube channel and on Google Plus, but we'll demo it out and take a look. And you can really see how both of these devices and just how mobile in general has advanced with some of these gaming features. That said, it's gonna suck battery like it's nobody's business. So keep that in mind when you're playing these games. Mass Effect Infiltrator, let's go ahead and play and we're going to resume it and we're going to wait for this one to load up as well. So let's start these up. You can see the graphics are really incredible across the board. I find that graphics overall, this is just a personal thing, I find them overall to be a little bit better on the Tegra 3 than I do on the Snapdragon S4 Pro. Two things to point out though, I find that overall processing power is a little bit better over here just in day-to-day -day use and two, the uh, actually, well, I actually have three things. Two, the two gigabytes of RAM is really nice over here. And three, I find that overall standby time is better on this one. I find that the Tegra 3 kind of sucks battery uh, a little bit more than the Droid DNA does. But you can kind of see overall graphics here. I've got little butterflies. Let me, I don't even know how to play this game, but we're going to pretend like I do. And that was fun, wasn't it? Fun to watch Aaron do terrible at games on the internet. I know what you're thinking, friends. So those are the games. You can see the processors are incredibly responsive all around on both of these devices. Let's take a look at camera as well. Eight megapixel shooters on both of these. I don't really know that I can come up with a good uh, definitive win here for either one because I think HTC has a really great image sense chip all around. Image sense is impressive. It continues to be one of my favorites. It best, I wouldn't say it best, but it comes pretty darn close to the iPhone 5. So in my opinion, the best camera phones on the market right now, HTC devices with image sense, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 and Galaxy S3, and the iPhone 5. Any of those are gonna have fantastic shooters for day-to-day -day use. I think you'll be really happy across the board with either or any of those devices, I should say. Now, I just unboxed the Nokia Lumia 820 a minute ago, so we'll take a look at this one. We're gonna load up some Windows Phone goodness here, and we'll take a look, and we're gonna snap the competitors. Come on now, HTC. I want you to take this picture. Don't crap out on me here. Don't. I know it's a Nokia device, but let's, let's get it together and take a good image. And actually, this is probably not the best image. Let me find something a little bit different color. Let's find this, for example, AT&T, the Red Galaxy S3. And I have the flash on in this instance. But what I really do like is that ability to do the burst mode stuff, take quick shots, and I'll do the same thing over here so you can kind of see how it works. Let me turn the flash off so that doesn't happen. And let's turn the sound on so you can hear it. And I can move back and forth. So let's say I'm watching a game, or perhaps I'm watching the Mavs play. I'm like, you know what, I want to take a bunch of pictures. I can keep going all the way up, and I can find the best picture here. And let's say, you know what, that's my favorite picture. We're going to delete. Oops, I'm sorry, I did not mean to delete that. Let's make that the best picture. 
see what I can do here. Select all, and let's just say, you know what? They're all terrible. Let's start all over again. You can do that or you can select the best picture. And likewise, on both of these devices, you can turn it into video mode, take a video and snap stills while you're doing that. So you know what you're watching in that video. You're taking a video of the maps playing and you're like, oh, snap, good score, good basket, three-pointer. And you can do the same thing over here. And I meant to turn the flash off, but I did not, forgot. So you can see all the pictures I took just before I let go of the button. So same the same features over here, and you've got a couple of new features as a result of Sense 4 Plus, and I'll show you those. Flip it around to the front-facing camera, and Aaron's got a beard. And then I'll come over here to this one so you can see, and let's flip this around, and that was recording the entire time. So let's go over to settings. Actually, I took that back. Maybe it's down here. That's what I wanted. Slow motion video. I can change my scene selection if I want to. Panorama, group portrait, HDR. So I've got a lot of different choices and Sense 4 Plus. They're really kind of enhancing and honing in on the fact that all these devices that have the Image Sense chip have really great cameras. And I think that's a distinguishing feature HTC is going to use to market in late 2012 and early 2013 before all the new crop of devices come out at CES, Mobile World Congress, CTA, all the infinite, um, infinite amount of trade shows that we have in early 2013. I think that's a distinguishing feature they're going to use to market in the latter half of 2012 and in early 2013. So both of these devices are really great. And unfortunately, you know, it's a dogfight video. I can't cover every single feature. So I try to cover what's most important to consumers, the mainstream consumer. These are both awesome, awesome devices. They've got some awesome personal information management stuff that I wasn't even able to get around to. Things like, for example, when I go into Bill Stevenson's contact information, where I can go to the thread and I can select messages, email, call history, and go to the gallery and more and easily access that stuff. These are great devices. The question that I have for HTC is in 2012, can they compete with the industry leaders? Can they compete with Samsung? Can they compete with Apple? Can they compete with LG and Motorola and all their competitors all across the marketplace? My answer is yes, but they've really been struggling as of late. And devices like this are fantastic. Devices like this are fantastic, but they really need to hone these in, get these available on all the different carriers. There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to walk in to AT&T or T-Mobile or Sprint or Verizon and get this exact same device much like I can the Galaxy S3 or much like I can in some way with the LG Optimus G, the way it's on AT&T and Sprint. Unfortunately, these are carrier exclusives across the board, so if you're in the US, you're stuck to Verizon or AT&T. That said, a winner of a dogfight has to be declared. The winner, it's a very close one, but the winner is the HTC Droid DNA. The five inch 1080p HD display is a game changer in a lot of ways. Five inches is a really surprisingly nice sweet spot for watching YouTube, for playing music, for doing stuff where it's big but it's not too big. Surprisingly good for that. Verizon's 4G LTE continues to be fast. The winner over here though on the HTC One X Plus is the 64 gigabytes of internal storage. That said, I do notice a difference, a speed difference. The two gigabytes of RAM really makes the difference here between fast, that combined with the processor. The Tegra 3 processor is a really solid one, but combined with only a gigabyte of RAM, I do notice a little bit of slowdown from time to time. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for continuing coverage of the Droid DNA and the One X Plus on the site. Hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what you think. Work account is phone dog underscore Aaron. Personal account is Aaron C. Baker. December is my last month at phone dog. So stay tuned for some really exciting changes coming in 2013 to videos and more. Dog fights will still be around. Reviews will still be around. We got some crazy exciting stuff coming on in 2013 on phone dog. I should say coming up, not coming on. Well, maybe both on PhoneDog.com. Be sure to follow PhoneDog underscore Taylor as well. He's the main man going into 2013 doing video content. So stay tuned. Ask him any questions you have. And let me know what you think of both of these devices on Twitter and on Facebook. Thanks so much for watching. As always, we'll see you next time.